Assalamu alaikum viewers of Imam Hussain TV and welcome to tonight's show. Eternal ethics, forgiveness is a topic tonight. How do we forgive? A number of people quarrel with each other. Some people do not speak to each other. Brothers fighting with other brothers. Husbands fighting with wives, ex-wives, ex-husbands, children families, communities, races, wars, creeds, societies. History dictates a number of occurrences where there have been wrongdoings, as it were. So how does one forgive? In this society, is there a lack of forgiveness? With me tonight, we have Dr. Sayyid Amar Naqshwani. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyid Amar. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. Once again, a privilege to have you on the show tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, eternal ethics, forgiveness. So with that in mind, I'd like to start the show off with one key uh, verse, as it were. Surah Zumar, verse 53. It reads as follows. Say, O my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is He who is the forgiving, the merciful. With that in mind, what can you actually address in terms of this key verse of the Holy Quran that's just been read out, as it were? One of the most wonderful ethical traits that any human being can have, irrespective of whether they are a Muslim or a non-Muslim, is to be a forgiving personality, is to be a forgiving human being is to be somebody who manifests the forgiveness of God. Okay. For the verse that you have quoted is probably one of the most beautiful verses on forgiveness that you'll ever come across in any religious text of any group of religious people in the world. If you were to break down chapter 39, verse 53, there's no way you'd have any fear of hell because you'll be saying that a Lord who's so forgiving, there's only one way, place where I'm going, and that is heaven. One way. Because even the way God talks to us is a lesson for us in the way we should think of when forgiving others without having a chip on one's shoulder when forgiving mm -hmm. without thinking that we are so great because we've been forgiving right he still calls us his servants after we've transgressed against him so much قُلْ يَا عِبَادِي my ibad not قُلْ يَا ظُلَّامِ you group of oppressors. Say to those servants of mine. And the fact that we're still in that world of Ubudiyah is an honor. Mm -hmm. Because really, we have not been just with our Lord. Say to my servants who have been extravagant in some of their behaviors. Extravagant? I've completely dismissed your legal system for two, three, five, 10, 15 years, and you've called it a bit of extravagance? What type of generous Lord do I have? What makes you doubt that generous Lord? So the Quran says, 
say to my servants. And this verse opens up our discussion tonight because I think this verse should hopefully allow many of the viewers to forgive those who they've taken years to forgive by looking at the beauty of Allah's forgiveness. Say to my servants who have been a little extravagant against themselves. Do not be despondent of God's mercy. Allah forgives all sins. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. For he is the most forgiving, the most merciful. merciful. I will repeat this many times in this series on ethics. There are certain ethical verses in the Quran, like the verse we looked at with justice. This verse, other verses which should represent Islam. That other religions talk of a forgiving God. Other religions mention a forgiving Christ. But no one mentions a forgiving God, God. of Islam. Yes. People like to talk of the fact that Allah has shadid al-iqab. Allah has most severe punisher. Well, God will punish those who have been unjust. There are countries in the world today that punish those criminals who have been unjust, who have raped children, who have spread drugs and destroyed people's lives. Yes. But at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 68 times in the Quran. How many? 68. 68 times in the Quran. Discusses divine forgiveness. You see, for example, Irfir. يغفر تغفر مغفرة All of the derivatives to keep reminding us that don't doubt my forgiving nature. I'll forgive and I'll forgive all sins. Therefore that verse should begin to motivate us today because there are some viewers who have not forgiven their exes. There are some viewers who have not forgiven their parents. Sure. There are some viewers who have not forgiven their cousins. There are some viewers who have not forgiven friends. That verse should encourage us to become a forgiving community. Okay, okay, alhamdulillah. So, Sayyidina, thank you for that brilliant introduction, as it were, and breakdown for that verse. Um, but are we, a, are we a forgiving Muslim? No. No? We Muslims are not a forgiving community. <laughs> We're ruthless. We're not a forgiving community. If we remember you've done something years ago, we'll destroy you. And if we heard that you've done something recently, we'll destroy you. Eternal ethics, the basis of it is willing to purify a heart full of malice, mm. hatred. Arrogance, animosity, animosity anger. rebellion. The Muslim community sometimes is a microcosm of the macrocosm of the human community. That's an unforgiving community. Someone does something wrong, we don't forgive. But when we it's us, we, we it. beg for forgiveness. When others ask us for forgiveness, that listen, I was wrong that day, please forgive me. What I did, I did not mean to do. What I said, I was wrong. My attitude was wrong. I'm not infallible. I'm not error-free. Mm -hmm. All of us have blips. Give me a chance. The Muslim community is an unforgiving community. Firstly, it doesn't have the bedrock of making 70 excuses. Okay. Which is a bedrock for forgiveness. That sometimes when someone does something wrong, we say, Ya Allah, ighfir li. Recognizing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soft-hearted. Many of us are hard-hearted. Mm -hmm. And while the Muslim community remains a community that's unforgiving, then we'll see trials and tribulations. Right. Okay. A community that is not willing to forgive one another's faults and is always ready to blaspheme or slander one another is the community that's not going to see blessings. 
Okay. Because they've drifted from the Quranic ethos and message. The Quranic ethos was that we're all God's creation. But that God recognizes we have the ability to sin. But he's always kept the door open for us. Many of us shut the door on those who sinned. Mm. We saw that there were members of our community who in their teenage years dabbled with drugs. We saw there were members in our community who were in the world of the obscene or the world of the lascivious. We drunk too much alcohol, committed adultery. But we closed the door of forgiveness on them even though our Lord kept it open. Yes. While we recognize that our Lord has kept the door of forgiveness open, then who are we to shut that door? Absolutely. Absolutely. The moment God shuts the door of forgiveness, then we shut. So sincerely, Muhammad, if you're asking me, are we a forgiving community? We're not a forgiving community. Right. Mm. I've seen it in my own career. That there are moments where people will not let go of. They say, how could he say that? How could he do that? Buddy, firstly, nobody said that I'm ma'soom. But secondly, you have a problem with my lecture or you have an envy of my position or my popularity or my name or my... Are you being someone who's attacking me and saying, I will never fix such a thing because I wronged you or because you have a problem with something else related to us? Now, you imagine that's just a micro thing. Yeah, imagine sure. on the macro level, Absolutely. how many people are not forgiven even though they've changed. Mm -hmm. Many of us messed up in our teenage years. Many yes. of us did wrong. Many of us did wrong in our 20s. We have to keep the door of forgiveness right. open for each other. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. But is the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is he ghafoor? What does it exactly mean? Well, the root is to cover. Okay. So when we're saying it's God cover what I've done. Open the door for me again. You know, he's sattar al ayub He covers one's faults. You know, people always ask me, what would you say are two ingredients for success Islamically? Okay. I'm like, number one, recognizing that all izza belongs to Allah and all izza comes from Allah. And secondly, that if it wasn't for Allah covering my faults, I wouldn't be where I am. Right. The root, therefore, is to ask Allah to cover. Okay. God, I messed up. Mm. I messed up. Do not embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. And don't just... I ask you not to embarrass me, but also, Ya Allah, please. Cover me with your glory. Yes, that grace. Okay. Cover me with your grace. So the root mm -hmm. indicates a covering which we seek. Libas is a covering. Clothing, yeah. There's a libas. You are so article. There's a, a form of clothing that covers your private parts. There's a libas which is, they call it as if it's a rish, you know. It beautifies you. Okay. Like feathers beautify right. certain animals. Yes, like yes. The, the peacock. The peacock. Mm. Proud. There is a libas known as taqwa. Not a physical clothing. No. The others are physical. There's a spiritual garb. Therefore, when I say astaghfirullah, I'm saying, Ya Allah, cover what I've done. Wow. But give me a spiritual garb of returning in the favor of not just your favor, but the favor of the muttaqeen as well. Deep words. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Similarly, Sayyidina, is the Most High, Lord Almighty, is he tawab? What, what does that actually mean? You're talking of a Lord who accepts repentance all the time. This Lord doesn't want to send you to hell. He gives you ample opportunities. You call him Ghafoor, he's always forgiving. He's ready to cover up what you've done. Okay. You call him Tawab, he's always accepting your repentance and your return. Because Tawbah. Okay. And if you're looking at derivatives such as words like Awab. Mm -hmm. To always be returning back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I say, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu alayhi. 
Everyone understands it as I'm asking Allah for forgiveness. No. I ask you, O oh Allah, to cover what I've done. Return me to your glory and allow me to return with the garb of repentance. Therefore, when a person talks to Allah and recognizes that he is tawab, mm -hmm. recognizes that Allah always accepts our tawbah. If you have a toba that is a sincere toba, uh -huh. not a toba the way it's like, you know what, I'm going to ask Allah Just to allow me back in and then I'm back out again to where I had yeah. asked him to forgive me for going to those areas, then no, that's not a sincere toba. When I therefore recognize that my Lord's forgiving and that my Lord keeps allowing me to return, why would I want to disobey that Lord? The test for me is when I see that he opens the door of forgiveness and allows me to return. Mm -hmm. Have I done the same with his creation? That's the test. It's one thing recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ghafoor. That Allah is tawab. Can you manifest them in your life? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When someone comes and tells you, Muhammad, I did something wrong. Cover them, bro. Yeah. Please, I was wrong. Do you allow me to return back into your life? I messed up. If you turn around and say no, then you've not understood the serious and our point that has become a manifestation of Allah's name. Yes. Allah, who he said was adil, establish adala. Mm -hmm. Allah, who he said was ghafoor, be someone who provides maghfirah. Allah, who is that is tawab, allow people to return. Yes. That's where the test is. Okay, okay. And now, just all of Allah's names are beautiful, as it were. So, is Allah Rahman and Rahim as well? And that's the beauty, the, the, the silver lining. Okay, okay. Is that it's His mercy that gets us through all of this. Right. This is the silver lining. If we were to be God, judged by God's justice, none of us will get to heaven. It's because of His mercy. His mercy. And it's His mercy that ensures that we're forgiving. So where's your mercy? Mm -hmm. When you recognize Allah is ghafoor, and you recognize Allah is tawab, and you recognize that Allah is Rahman and Rahim, then exhibit these in your life. Be godly individuals on the earth. What do you think it is that attracted people to certain personalities? It's when those personalities manifested godly attributes. Many times we hear that line. They manifested a godly attribute. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean? I recognize that my Lord has forgiven the worst of the worst. There's a story in the Quran. There was a man who they found used to, he used to dig the graves. Undertakers. They used to dig the graves. That's right, yes. Yeah, and put the body in and so on. Yeah. They found that this man would have physical intercourse with dead bodies. I'm sure there's a word for it. Physical intercourse with the dead. <sighs> when they found this person, how? He had come to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, and his family. And he had said to him that, you know, I've done something so bad, I want God to forgive me. But I doubt God will forgive me. The Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his family, obviously knows these verses. <laughs> he knows that Allah SWT has said, tell my servants that, you know what, don't worry, I'll forgive all sins. So he's like, don't worry, God will forgive you. What is it? What is it? Tell me, what is it? He's like, no, 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 I don't really want to say there's no way God will accept. He's like, Habib, just go ahead and tell me. There's no way God's going to accept. He's like, well, if you tell us, then we'll see if there's a way. He's like, I'm the ones who dig up the graves, bury people. Last time there was this beautiful body of this girl. And I had physical intercourse with the dead body. The Prophet said to him, leave, leave, get out. I feel the flames of hell about to touch me. Who would forgive this man? Nobody would. Who would forgive him? All of us would kick him out of our kingdoms.
of our cities. Mm -hmm. Has Allah ever rejected one who has called out his name and has not forgiven him? This person went to the top of the mountain. He was bawling, crying, <laughs> crying nonstop. I ask you somebody who has slept with a dead body. You would think that that's the worst sin. No way can you be forgiving. No way. Who would forgive you? Allah forgives all sins. This person, one day, the Jibra'il السلام, comes to the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, and tells him glad tidings. Allah has forgiven him because he sincerely repented for the sin that he's committed. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is willing to forgive somebody who slept or had physical intercourse with a dead body, how can I not okay. forgive my relative who did not invite me to a wedding? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you hear people saying, you ask them, why don't you speak with your relatives anymore? You know what? They didn't invite me to a wedding. Or they called me late. Or on Eid, they came two days later than they should have. Or, or, or. it's not that bad. You break up a whole family, a whole community on the basis of these fickle things. That your kids cannot even play with their cousins anymore because of your lack of forgiveness yes. for one another. Yeah. Ahlul Bayt والسلام, always in their life would stress that keep on trying to find the doors of forgiveness for those who have wronged you. You look throughout their lives. Therefore, part of the eternal ethics lessons is that if my Lord is so willing to forgive somebody like this, Quranically, then why am I not willing to forgive those who have had misdemeanors less than this? Yes, yep. alhamdulillah. So, with that in mind, the action of sinning. And now let's bring in an in in ingredient of knowledge. Mm. Consciousness. Does the consciousness or level of human, of, or the level of knowledge in a human have a role on the repercussions on that sin? I think there is a difference between someone who commits a sin arrogantly and someone who does it negligently. What about knowingly? Knowingly, where their conscience doesn't tell them anymore that this is wrong, mm -hmm. you are in a dark pit, you're in trouble. Knowingly, but inside you still feel some guilt, right. the doors of forgiveness are still open. I see. You see, we discuss on many shows and many lectures which have been given the difference between nafs al ammara, nafs al lawama, nafs al mutma'inna. Nafs al mutma'inna is that divine status where you become the manifestation of God's attributes on the earth. You've reached a level where you want to see the manifestation of forgiveness, Hussein bin Ali in Karbala. You want to see the manifestation of justice, Ali, son of Abu Talib. You want to see the manifestation of being Jawad, Muhammad bin Ali al-Jawad in Baghdad. Sure. You want to see the manifestation of Sari al rida Ali ibn Musa. So that's al-Mutma'inna. Al-Lawama is, I'm still a sinner, but I feel guilt when I do something. Okay. So there's this feeling that, okay, you know, we may have all... We may have all, there are some guys these days who are in the world of drugs, some are mm -hmm. doing weed, marijuana, yeah, yeah. some are, you know, balloons. And sure. uh, I never thought a balloon could help, you know, a person get stoned. But hey, that's, that's the world that we live in. <laughs> um, and there's still a sense of guilt in the morning after. There's still a sense that I've, see, I, I, I sometimes think when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with us when we sin, we know that it doesn't harm him in any way, us sinning. Okay. I think he's angry that we have disrespected our nafs, nafs. that he's given us. Yes. That you could do much better than that. I've given you part of the divine spirit. That's what you do with it. Come on. Yeah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't affect him. But for us, if there's still that guilt, the doors of forgiveness are still open. Ammara, however, okay. Nafs al Ammara is a different story. Nafs al Ammara is when, like, bro, who cares? God and Day of Judgment and all of that stuff. 
Let's just have a good night. Mm -hmm. Let's just do all of this. Let's, that person is in a state. But I will say something. Okay. There have been people in that state. Uh -huh. They could still find their way back. Yeah. Yeah. Is it linear? As in, do you go from Ammara to Lawama to Matma'inna? No. Oh, see. There are some who in a split second went from being on the depths of Jahannam to all of a sudden being Ansar al Hussein. Yes, it okay. can happen. Right. Really? But it can. But it can. There are some famous personalities who were in the, in the depths of darkness in terms of sin who ended up being God's greatest worshippers. It can happen. But while a person admits, and that's the beauty of du'as like du'a at mm -hmm. I love du'a at of Imam Zain al Abidin. Because du'a at of Imam Zain al Abidin shows you ethically the meaning of forgiveness and how God's door is always open for you. But you've just got to talk to God. Yes. Admit your weakness. Sure. This is a big thing. I admit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I have faults. I have weaknesses. There are moments where I'm not strong enough to stay away from sin. Help me. Keep the door open for me. Because without you, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. That admitting makes a big difference. Dua tawbah of Imam Zain al Abidin. Many people only recite it in Shahar Ramadan. Yeah. 23rd night of Ramadan, for example, you see people read Dua Tawbah, Dua Makaram al Not just then. We have Dua Tawbah, we have Ghusl al Tawbah. There's a Ghusl of Tawbah. Ghusl of Tawbah is when a person says, I've been on the drink for months, I've been on the drink for years. Today, I'm going to have a fresh Ghusl, wash myself thoroughly as a metaphor for washing away my sins. sins. So we have ghusl at tawbah We have dua at tawbah mm -hmm. If Allah has given us so many of these, how could we not be forgiving to people? Yes, yes. Look, forgiving to people doesn't mean I be lovey-dovey with them. Bro, you know what? I forgive you now. Let's hang out. Let's go to each other's weddings. Let's love and joke. But just keeping the door of mercy open because that one door of rejection of forgiveness can cause repercussions and dangers in society. Right. The mosque is split. The community is split. But a door of forgiveness can bring a softness in society. She can say it now, inshallah, we'll go for a break. See you right back, inshallah. <laughs> As we approach the festive seasons of Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Ghadir, many of us will be celebrating these joyous occasions by getting together with our families and having meals at restaurants or perhaps even at the local Husseiniya. Whilst there will be thousands of orphans living in and around the city of Karbala who will be celebrating Eid in poverty. While we celebrate the sacrifice of Nabi Ibrahim and the appointment of Amir al-Mu'mineen with delicious meals and fancy delicacies, they will be celebrating Eid by staring at poverty point blank. With this in mind, Imam Hussein Development and Relief Foundation is embarking upon a campaign to be able to bring joy to the lives of the orphans and make Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Ghadir a festive occasion which they too can celebrate. We aim to provide these children with gifts, take them out to a restaurant and enjoy a full course meal followed by a fun day at a local fun fair. And through this, we are hoping to be able to bring a smile to one of the orphans in this difficult life that they are surrounded by. You can be a part of this campaign by contributing $10 today and through the will of Allah and the grace of Imam al Hussein and Abu al Fadl al Abbas, together as a Shia Ummah, we can take care and change the lives of the orphans of Ali Muhammad.
Eid al Qadir is a day in which we give thanks to Allah the Almighty by bestowing us with the love and leadership of Imam Ali salam. In honor of this greatest Eid, Imam Hussein TV are giving the loyal and devoted viewers a free Imam Ali t-shirt. Pledge a little as £7 a month to support the vital work of Imam Hussein TV in educating the Shia community worldwide. Once you have pledged, you will receive an Eid gift from us to you. To become a monthly partner, text in or WhatsApp us hashtag Khadirshat to plus 447-939-917-163 or visit us on our website www.imamhussein3.tv Imam Hussein TV, your gateway to Karbala. Assalamualaikum and welcome back to our live show, Eternal Ethics Forgiveness. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Just uh, going back to the points that you mentioned earlier on. So we've gone through the um, narration um, points, as it were, of the qualities of forgiveness, as it were. Now we're just going into the point of do why do the prophets ask for forgiveness? When they are when they are masum first and foremost, they teach us how to ask for forgiveness. Otherwise, how would me and you speak to God? Mm -hmm. Is there anyone better than those chosen by God to teach us how to talk to God and how to ask for forgiveness from God? You know, when we were younger, we got to school, and you know you've you've been naughty. Um, your parents will be like, "You go to that teacher and you apologize properly." Yes, Say, sir. I'm sorry, I promise I won't do it again. Please give me one more chance. Showing that etiquette. We wouldn't do that. We'd just go up to the teacher and say, I'm sorry, but when your parents gave you an etiquette, mm -hmm. you look at dua kumail, amir al mu'mineen. What is it? People think because Imam Ali is a sinner that he's talking to God and saying, Allahumma ghfir li dhanubalati tahbisu dua because he's a sinner. He's teaching me and you the way the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, taught us how to pray. The Holy Prophet yes. would say, Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabi. He was saying salam to himself. He's teaching me how to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, yes. And likewise with these du'as, du'a tawbah is not Imam Zayn al Abidin's a sinner. Du'a yastashir, du'a mashlul, mm -hmm. du'a Abu Hamza, du'a jawshan al kabir. All of these du'a kumail, du'a tawassum, du'a nudba, all of these are teaching us how to talk to Allah. Yes. I defy anyone to show me the etiquette of talking to Allah by personalities living in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the way Ahlul Bayt talk to Allah. I don't just respect Ahlul Bayt because they're the Prophet's family. Any Tom, Dick and Harry can tell you Imam al Hassan, Imam al-Hussein are the grandchildren of the Prophet. And any Tom, Dick and Harry can tell you that I respect them and they're on top of my head and they're the best of people and they are meant to be honored and so on. But I don't respect them because they're the grandchildren. I respect them because when I wanted to see spirituality, there was no door that I could knock on except theirs. You show me a companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family who left any supplication behind with the quality of Dua Kumail or Dua Yastashir or Dua Makaram Al Akhlaq or Dua Al Sabah. Mm -hmm. Show me! Show me so I can follow them! You can show me people who lived around the Prophet who turned out to be politicians. People who turned out to be commanders of army. But none of them have left behind a supplication to talk to Allah. None of them! How could someone 20 years earlier was burying his daughter alive <laughs> and another one who was bowing down before idols? Yes. 
How can he be the same as the one bought up in a house which inherited Abraham's legacy? Therefore, for us, it's an honor that we read Al Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa the way they talk to Allah and the etiquettes they've shown us. Okay, okay. Going into the social um, aspects, as it were, of tonight's show, we've got a, a question. Uh, unfortunately, um, he's used the name Sami. He's a drug addict, and he's been a drug addict for years. And at the same time, he's also got an addiction to pornography. What would you say about that in terms of him coming closer to Allah? We're no one to judge him. There's too many people who think they're Maliki Yawm al in the Muslim world. Yeah. And all I can say to Sami is, firstly, thank you for your message. Secondly, you're at a spiritual level that's still okay because you're still reflecting on your sins. There are people out there who sin who don't care. Yes, yeah. There are Muslims out there who believe that the way they look religious externally, even if they have the worst hearts, even if they have the unbelievable amounts of envy, they think they can get away with it. No, you don't get away with it. The batan is as vital as the bahar. Mm. And when Sami says to me that he's a drug addict, Sami, there's ways of working on this. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't recognize your plight. He does. And don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at you graciously. He still will. But you've got to work on yourself as well. Take yes. one step to Allah. Allah will take ten back towards you. And if there's an addiction to pornography, you're not the first and you won't be the last. Yes. There are millions out there, both people of religion and people outside of religion, who find that they have no boundaries to sexual pleasure, mm -hmm. no limits, and that they could satisfy themselves in every way that they want. Whereas we say that there are certain boundaries. Yes, yes. Don't suppress it. You don't want to suppress the natural instinct, but you also don't want to go to an extreme because I think sure. everyone recognizes that extreme in anything is unhealthy. It's, yeah. But Sammy, if you doubt, God will forgive you. I told you earlier, there was a guy sleeping mm. with a physical relationship with a dead body and God forgave him. You're in the world of drugs, the world of porn, immoral, no doubt, but hopefully a world which if he leaves his details... Afterwards, we will endeavor to help, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. And that brings us nicely onto this point of the types of istighfar. Mm. How many types of istighfar are there, Sayyidina? Well, there's, there's an istighfar which is recommended. Okay. There's istighfar which is wajib. Then there is an istighfar which I think is forbidden and there's debates surrounding it. So, recommended istighfar in mm -hmm. Salat al-Witr of Salat al-Layl. Okay. You know, it's recommended right. to do istighfar, yes. a number of istighfar. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask for forgiveness of people. That's right, 40 more minimum. Yeah. And that's the beauty of Salat al layl mm. That in Salat al layl you end up asking for forgiveness of people. It's as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inculcates that ethical trait in you without you knowing. That your worst enemies, their picture comes up in your head and you're like, okay, اغفر li fulan, اغفر li fulan. <laughs> and that's a wonderful spiritual moment. I don't think any of us, and me included, have ever fathomed the spiritual wonder of Salat al-Layl, of Namaz al -Shab. And there are traditions that also indicate to us that if you commit a sin, if as long as by night time you've asked for forgiveness, yes, Allah yes, will yes, delete yes. it. There are traditions That's along right. those lines. Yes, sir, and there yeah. are traditions from the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, where he says the kafara for our sins in mm -hmm. the daytime is Salat al-Layl. Okay. It deletes them. Not an excuse, by the way. There'll be no, some no, viewers no, no, out there no. thinking, you know what, let's just make sure we get back home in time. Yeah. And we don't want to go towards that direction. So there's a recommended istighfar. A recommended istighfar would be qunwut um, of salat al witr After tasbihat al arba subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wal ilaha illallah, wal akbar in, in, in salah, then at the end we always say, astaghfirullah rabbi. Yeah. Wa atubu ilayhi, for example. Um... Those would be definitely the recommended. Uh -huh. So they're the mustahab ones. Yeah, but mustahab. Then you have obligatory. Right. Let me give you an example of a wajib istighfar. We mentioned in our show on justice mm -hmm. that the Arabs would tell their wives, Dihar, you are to me like the back the of my mum. If you can't pay the kafara for that, then the kafara would go towards istighfar. So it would be wajib for you. Right. 
even in Hajj time, there are certain things if they're repeated a couple of times, you may end up having to do istighfar as the as a uh, kafara. kafara. Forbidden, they say, to pray for the hypocrites and those pagans. That's forbidden. That's forbidden. Any any hypocrite. Yeah, they they normally base it on um, the verse in Surah Toba. Sora 9, nine. verse 113 to 114, which discusses the uncle of Ibrahim and discusses the Holy Prophet. It is not fitting for the Prophet and those who believe to ask for forgiveness for the polytheists, even I if they see. were relatives or near ones to them, as Abu Lahab was, of course, a near one to the Holy Prophet. Um, so even Ibrahim with his uncle, he had promised his uncle, you know, I'll ask for your forgiveness, but the uncle turned out to be an enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you got recommended istighfar, wajib istighfar, and forbidden istighfar. Okay, thank yeah. you for that. Um, the actual nights now for istighfar, are there any designated nights? Are there best nights? Are there it's good beautiful, nights? and I think these nights, you know, such as such as Laylatul Qadr, uh -huh. these nights such as Thursday night, mm -hmm. these nights such as the night of Ashura, you know, a night where people, or the day of Ashura, where people do a'mal of Ashura. Uh -huh. These are to remind us not just that Allah is all forgiving, but that now you should let bygones be bygones. Don't sit there saying, Ya Allah, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And your cousin is literally five seats away from you. And when he asks you for forgiveness, you never forgive. You've got the, the whole conundrum wrong. Mm -hmm. The equation you've messed up. The equation was, if I can ask Allah for forgiveness, then I should forgive the creation. So on these nights, take advantage of the fact that Allah's door of forgiveness is always open by opening to others as well. Okay, one of the most quoted points of istighfar in a dua invocation form is astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu ilayh what does this actually mean and does it have any conditions i seek forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now i'm returning back onto his path the main condition is that you've regretted what you've done before the main lesson is that when Allah has allowed you back in, start forgiving others and allowing them in. Okay, okay. So one should ponder, actually. This is what's the problem in the Muslim mm. community, is that there are a lot of rituals that are done without reflection. R reflection. I am now coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the 23rd night of Shah Ramadan, Laylatul Qadr. Allahumma ghfir li dhunub allati tunazzil al-bala. Allahumma ghfir li dhunub allati tahbis al-dua. Allahumma ghfir li kulla dhambin adhnabt. And I've got, for example, somebody there from my friends. They've asked for a year, for two years. Please forgive me. I was wrong. And you'll say, I'll never forgive them. No chance I'll forgive them. This is not Islamic ethics. Right. Islamic ethics is to try and always have that mercy in your heart to welcome them back. Not for their sake. For Allah. Difference. If it's for them, you'll find it hard. But you're saying, Ya Allah, you told me you love those who forgive. forgive. I want to be in the echelons of those who forgive. Mm, you want to embody that quality. I want to embody it. Why? More. Yes. Ya Muhammad, if me and you now, we're both lovers of Ahlul Bayt, inshallah. inshallah. And we've both done ziyarah. We've both done hajj. And we've recited the Quran. But we've got this problem with each other, and we both think we're going to Jannah. Listen, bro, if you're in Jannah, I don't want you to, I don't want to go. <laughs> and you're probably thinking, if I'm in Jannah, you don't want to go. Either we sort out things now, <clears throat> or there's a good chance we're going to be waiting a long time. Right. Have you ever thought of the fact that there are people in this world you don't really like? Yes. They're the same method as you, same school as you, uh -huh. love a little bit as much as you. Da -da 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 -da. How are you two going to be in Jannah together? Now, you might be able to say that, listen, I'm going to buy a part of Jannah that they're not going to come near me. <laughs> There's no way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets a person to Jannah who still has that in their heart. 
Look at the Ahlul Bayt alayhi The person who came sincerely to them to ask for forgiveness, it makes a difference. I'm not talking those who continue to be arrogant. Those who can actually came to them and asked for they didn't keep it in their heart. They didn't say, you wronged me. How dare you? Who do you think you are? No. The doors are open. Okay, alhamdulillah. Thank you for that. Ten minutes left in tonight's show. Mm. There's um, still a few more questions to get through. Um, how forgiving really were the prophets oh, you of know God? <laughs> they, were, they were unbelievable. I mean, many, many, it's not we've easy. got many examples in the Holy Quran. Mm. What's your favorite example? Of a prophet in the Quran on, in terms of how forgiving he was. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Towards the which prophet? prophet? Yeah, which Yunus prophet in the Quran? Islam comes to mind. Which prophet in the Quran do you find that he was forgiving to maybe family members or to or people who had wronged him when he was younger? Is there any prophet that Musa comes to mind? Islam. I'd say definitely you'd look at Yusuf. Mm -hmm. Of course, his brothers. Yusuf's forgiveness was divine. That was divine. That, that was a real lesson. Because listen, his brothers have messed up his life. We don't forgive people because they gave us a cheap gift. His brothers caused him to be arrested. His brothers caused him to be in prison. His brothers caused him to not see his dad for his whole youth. I ask everybody, when you claim to love Nabi Yusuf, and you claim to be a follower of Nabi Yusuf, do you have the forgiveness in you similar to Yusuf? When his brothers recognized that it was Binyamin and Yusuf there, do you have that same forgiveness? There are many of us who hear these stories, it doesn't affect us. There are some of us who hear stories of prophets forgiving, we don't forgive our parents if they wronged us. No one's saying to you, that they're going to be amazing when you forgive them. Do it for Allah. Allah's sake. Yes. So when I look at the story of Nabi Yusuf salam, I love that story because Nabi Yusuf, with all his trials and tribulations, he could have easily pointed out one of them and said, you know what? You messed me up that day. You were rude to me that day. You were arrogant towards me that day. You always open your big mouth. You No. لا تتريب عليكم اليوم. Same words. The Prophet, peace be upon his family, used the day of the opening of Mecca. How much Abu Sufyan wronged the Prophet? How much Wahshi the, uh, killed the uncle of the Prophet Hamza? The Prophet could have easily said, as some would do, put them down on the ground now, behead them. If he was a man who spread the religion by the sword, he could have beheaded them. He could have finished their lives. Today is a day of mercy, not a day of slaughtering. <laughs> so these prophetic examples are not just stories on the manabar we hear in Muharram. The aim, inshallah, is to implement them. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, now we've mentioned names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Ghafoor, Tawwab, Rahman. Rahim, what are the best words to ask when Allah, when asking for God's forgiveness? The best and, and words also would the be manner, the yeah. actual, as it were. How? How Ahsent, do we? Excellent question. Akhlaq, how do we actually go about humbling ourselves? You're humbling yourselves and talking to Allah. Humble yourselves with those who seek your forgiveness first. Mashallah. Don't be humble before Allah, and then with others, you suddenly become arrogant when they're. When they're in their weak moment, when someone's in a weak moment, they're like, bro, I'm sorry. Sister, I'm sorry. And the best words to use when talking to Allah are the du'as of Ahlul Bayt. The du'as of the Qur'an. I'd say there's one in particular. La ilaha illa an subhanak inni kuntu min al To admit that I was unjust. La ilaha illa an. The famous dhikr from the Nabi dhikr, Yunus. The Yunusi dhikr. That has many secrets behind that's it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Um, the, you've mentioned about Salat al Tahajjud. Mm. But if we can just revert back, say now, 
How great is the night prayer when forgiving and seeking forgiveness? You know, you want to forgive somebody. You know, there are, there are moments where people wonder, have they been forgiven by anybody over acts that they had performed? And you find that Salat al-Layl is where you can forgive people without them knowing. Wow. It's beautiful. Wow. It's, you don't forgive people showing off. There are people who like to forgive others, but you have to bring the whole clan, the whole tribe, the whole community, and then I will say, okay, I forgive you. Then there are those who forgive, not looking for fame, not looking for anything in return, purely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hmm. I did not worship you out of fear of hell, for it's the worship of a slave. Nor did I worship you, Allah, because I wanted heaven. For it's the worship of a businessman. Mm. I worship you because I found you worthy, worthy. of being worshipped. That's the worship of a free human yeah. being. When I forgive, I become free. Excuse the tattoos on my hands which say both words. <laughs> forgive, free. When I forgive, I become free. Free. When you don't forgive, you're still in shackles, shackles, even if they're not literal chains. You can't let go. Negative energy I don't need. Mm -hmm. You know what? We're all fallible. It's okay. You don't even have to say sorry to me. Ighfar li fulan. Ighfar. Ighfar. Ya Allah, forgive so-and-so. Ya Allah, forgive so-and-so. Forgive me. Astaghfirullah, Rabbi wa I could say to you, Al-Af, 300 times in Namaz Hashem. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But why is it when someone says to me, Al-Af, why don't listen? In Salat al when my when I'm telling my Lord, al -afu, I'm sorry, I'm expecting my Lord to answer me. But when people say to me, Af, they say sorry to me, no, I don't care what sorries they have. Yeah. Abi, we as Muslims, it's not the length of our beards. It's not the tightness of our hijabs. It's not the sibha that we have in our hands. It's the soft-heartedness that is fundamental. Okay. Okay, we've got uh, about three minutes left, say so enough. Um, there's a question from Ali. Um, say now my parents have robbed me. I find it very hard to forgive them. Yes. And what would you say to him? And he hasn't alluded to what uh, the reasons are, and that's, to be fair, ir irrelevant. Whose parents haven't wronged them? Yeah. Listen, parents aren't perfect and you're not per mm. perfect. I'm sure you wronged your parents Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. I'm sure there were nights your parents spent awake while you were comfortable. Yeah. Therefore, look at those who've been wronged before you, like the Ahlul Bayt were wronged by many, but they kept the door of forgiveness open. Inshallah, Ali, you can keep that door of forgiveness open for your parents as well. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that will bring a change in both your lives. Okay, final two points, say now, before we close um, tonight's show. Um, is it not that we're seeking to be a manifestation of God's names when we forgive? So that's just the first question. And also, arguably, the greatest moment of forgiveness occurs on the 10th of Muharram between Hor. And Imam Hussein in Islam. So if you can close with that, and just before that, if we can talk about maybe oh. the manifestation of... Ahlul Bayt are the manifestation of the names of Allah on earth. And none more pure, none more beautiful than Hussein bin Ali oh, al-Karbala. Yeah, no doubt. Not just Hur. There were more than Hur who came to his side. There were over 20 who joined him on the morning of the 10th of Muharram. Didn't say no to any of them. Welcome. They blocked water from his children, didn't say no. They caused fear in the hearts of his sisters, didn't say no. They are the ones who would lead to the eventual hate shown towards his family in Kufa and Sham, didn't say no. Who am I to say no when my Lord, after every verse which mentions punishment, says, but I am forgiving. In the Quran, you see a verse on punishment, then you say, but Allah is forgiving. Right. In the Quran, when there are certain Sharia codes which people attack, Allah says, but the best thing for you to do is not to implement the Sharia code. But the best thing for you to do is to try and find a way of forgiving the people. Imam al-Husayn in one afternoon taught a lesson for all of us. 
Not the beauty of your voice in Quran or how many hajj you've been to. Are you willing to forgive someone when they ask you for forgiveness? And that's why you found Hur bin Yazid Riyahi in tears when he saw how soft-hearted Imam al Hussein was. He welcomed him. He forgave him. He buried him. He looked after him. You will never see an eternal ethical lesson on forgiveness like Imam al Hussein's lessons on the 10th of Muharram. Yeah. Asan Tawseyna, shukran, and it's been an honor and a privilege uh, personally, I'm My sure pleasure. for Imam Hussein TV and also the viewers to have you on um, this great show. And I'd like to say, show. Con considering we're discussing the yes. eternal ethic of forgiveness, please forgive me. And please forgive me like in Shanda. any way if we've ever offended you or hurt you. In any way whatsoever, we're fallible human beings. And we hope that you would forgive us in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you hope that you have forgiveness from him. Inshallah, ilahi abid. Slap me. Idil Qadir is a day in which we give thanks to Allah the Almighty by bestowing us with the love and leadership of Imam Ali In honor of this greatest Eid, Imam Hussein TV are giving the loyal and devoted viewers a free Imam Ali t-shirt. Pledge a little as £7 a month to support the vital work of Imam Hussein TV in educating the Shia community worldwide. Once you have pledged, you will receive an Eid gift from us to you. To become a monthly partner, text in or WhatsApp us hashtag #khadirshirt to plus four four seven nine three nine nine one seven one six three, or visit us on our website www.imamhussein3.tv. Imam Hussein TV, your gateway to Karbala. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullah. As we approach the festive seasons of Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Ghadir. Many of us will be celebrating these joyous occasions by getting together with our families and having meals at restaurants or perhaps even at the local Husseiniyah. Whilst there will be thousands of orphans living in and around the city of Karbala who will be celebrating Eid in poverty. While we celebrate the sacrifice of Nabi Ibrahim and the appointment of Amir al-Mu'mineen with delicious meals and fancy delicacies, they will be celebrating Eid by staring at poverty point blank. With this in mind, Imam Hussein Development and Relief Foundation is embarking upon a campaign to be able to bring joy to the lives of the orphans and make Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Ghadir a festive occasion which they too can celebrate. We aim to provide these children with gifts Take them out to a restaurant and enjoy a full course meal followed by a fun day at a local fun fair. And through this, we are hoping to be able to bring a smile to one of the orphans in this difficult life that they are surrounded by. You can be a part of this campaign by contributing $10 today. And through the will of Allah and the grace of Imam al Hussein and Abu Fadl al Abbas, together as a Shia Ummah, we can take care and change the lives of the orphans of Ali Muhammad. <laughs>